Hi there, this is Bob Martin with uh, Nautilus Dry Docks and rcsub.com and this is uh, my latest project. This is a German Seehund midget submarine uh, kit by OTW and it's got uh, an older D&E miniatures watertight cylinder. Take a couple of minutes, walk you through the project, show you how I put it together. Okay, here you can see the major components uh, of the submarine kit. Uh, we've got the main sub hull on this side. The torpedoes uh, are permanently attached. This is the main drive unit, the watertight cylinders, as I mentioned earlier. D&D Miniatures 3.5 inch diameter watertight cylinder. Very simple ballast section. It is actually fully adjustable, which means you can transfer it from model to model, adjusting the ballast volume accordingly. Uh, and your main electronic section. You got your main uh, drive motor, two servos, receiver, and that's basically it. A nice simple system, runs through a gear reduction, magnetic linkages. It's the upper hull uh, assembly. So what I'm going to do now is show you how we get it uh, prepped for launch. Alright, first we're going to install the watertight cylinder. Uh, underneath the main section here is the uh, main drive battery. It's a 12 volt, 10 amp power nickel metal hybrid battery. It's been completely sealed. Basically to uh, install a watertight cylinder is a very simple process. The um, Velcro strap that holds the uh, entire assembly down uh, is right here. You can see it. Uh, you just attach it loosely at the very tip. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip the watertight cylinder into its cradles. Okay, if we want to take a look at that process again, my watertight cylinder is uh, basically back approximately one inch. I'm going to take my uh, linkages, they're magnetic, you can see the small magnets. I'm going to uh, slip them forward, these brass collars over the um, linkages. And same with the uh, dive planes. I'm going to take my um, dog bone connector right here put it in place on the model side and then basically just slip everything forward and it drops right in place. Everything is installed uh, and aligned. We push our connectors forward, make sure that they're engaged and uh, basically the watertight cylinder um, is in place. You can see it here. These two tabs line up on the bar, stops it from rotating and now all I need to do is tighten up this velcro strap and it holds everything down inside the model without any fasteners. Okay, now that our cylinder is in place as you can see I'm just going to take my uh, velcro fastener, snug it up, everything is very tight and in place. The main power for the unit is just simply done by making the uh, connection between the, uh, the battery and the watertight cylinder and it's just a, a standard battery connector simply connects together the unit has power, bundle the cords tuck them down into the bottom area the unit has power and, and is basically ready to go now that that is done I'm going to take our top hatch set it into place ensuring that the, uh, the brass uh, orientation pins are uh, lined up. Snaps down in place. Two screws, one in the front, one in the back. These are just finger tight. You don't need any tools to get into the model. And that's it. It is now uh, bundled up and ready for the water. Something else that comes as an option for this kit uh, is a, a later war variant that actually came with extended range fuel pods uh, on the side. It does add some visual interest, chose not to uh, model it in, uh, in that configuration for this model, but this is basically the piece that you would get from OTW uh, and they would go on the side of the model, something like that. Makes for, uh, like I said, a, a later war 
variant, a uh, little bit more visual interest, but this is sort of the more classic view uh, or classic configuration for the uh, this.